cuatro, cinco, seis. Join us on a rigorous step-by-step -step journey to fluency. I'm Timothy, and this is LearnCraft Spanish. Today we're going to learn a few new numbers and practice both using them and understanding them when we hear them in context. But first, we're actually going to look at a very interesting pronoun that we haven't talked about yet. So first, check out this sentence. They talked with each other. Se hablaron. So we already know how to use reflexive pronouns to refer to people doing something with each other. Here's another example. They saw each other. Se vieron. Now you can use these reflexive pronouns in any case that what people are doing with each other would normally take either a direct object or an indirect object. In all such cases, of course, the pronoun goes right before the verb. But what if what they're doing with each other would normally take a prepositional pronoun instead? For example, let's start with this sentence. They believe in their friends. Creen en sus amigos. If we change their friends to a pronoun, we know we have to use a prepositional pronoun. Here are a couple of examples. They believe in me. Creen en mí. They believe in them. Creen en ellos. But what if the people they believe in are themselves? Check this out. They believe in themselves. Creen en sí. So here we're using the word sí, which has an accent mark. It's spelled and pronounced exactly like the word for yes or indeed. But it also has this entirely different meaning. It's themselves or himself or herself, but as a prepositional pronoun. Here's another example. They talked among themselves. Hablaron entre sí. Now, in most cases, when someone does something to themselves and you use a prepositional pronoun, it'll just be a normal prepositional pronoun. For example, you have to believe in yourself. Tienes que creer en ti. But you'll use sí specifically when the word would be el, ella, ellos, or ellas. It's kind of like the word se, but specifically after a preposition. Now, very often you'll see some version of the word mismo after this. So, for example, let's start with this sentence. You have to believe in yourself. Tienes que creer en ti mismo. So in that case, we're using ti as a reflexive prepositional pronoun, and then we're using mismo to emphasize yourself. We talked about how to do this back in episode 68. Now, check out this sentence. They believe in themselves. Ellas creen en sí mismas. Let's get some practice with si as a prepositional pronoun. In this first example, translate by himself as por sí mismo. He has to do it by himself. Tiene que hacerlo por sí mismo. Tiene que hacerlo por sí mismo. They have to talk among themselves. Tienen que hablar entre sí. Tienen que hablar entre sí. She is looking at herself. Se está mirando a sí misma. Se está mirando a sí misma. 
They have to talk among each other by phone. Tienen que hablar entre sí por teléfono. Tienen que hablar entre sí por teléfono. I used to live there and they used to make those things for themselves. Yo vivía ahí y ellos hacían esas cosas para sí mismos. Yo vivía ahí y ellos hacían esas cosas para sí mismos. Let's also learn an idiom related to this. The phrase seguro de sí mismo means sure of himself, and it's an idiom that means confident. Something that's interesting about this is normally we use the verb estar with seguro. For example, I'm sure is estoy seguro. But the idea of being confident or self-assured is actually typically considered a personal trait, a part of who you are as a person. So you'll use ser. For example, she is very sure of herself. Ella es muy segura de sí misma. Now, once again, you'll use si specifically when you're using the third person, either singular or plural. But if you're talking about yourself, you'll use mi, as in seguro de mí mismo. And if you're using the informal second person, you'll use ti, as in segura de ti misma. And actually, if you're using a formal voice or talking with a group of people, you'll actually use usted or ustedes instead of si, even though in general, usted and ustedes use rules for third person. So, for example, if you're talking in a formal voice to a feminine person, you are very self-sure. Usted es muy segura de usted misma. Let's get some practice with this idiom. I told you he is sure of himself. Te dije que es seguro de sí mismo. Te dije que es seguro de sí mismo. In this one you're talking to a feminine person. I didn't know you were so sure of yourself. No sabía que eras tan segura de ti misma. No sabía que eras tan segura de ti misma. Look, she is sure of herself. Mira, ella es segura de sí misma. Mira, ella es segura de sí misma. I don't think they are sure of themselves. No creo que sean seguros de sí mismos. No creo que sean seguros de sí mismos. In all the time we have lived, we have been sure of ourselves. En todo el tiempo que hemos vivido, hemos sido seguros de nosotros mismos. En todo el tiempo que hemos vivido, hemos sido seguros de nosotros mismos. All right, now let's move on to some numbers. The word for four is cuatro, spelled C-U-A-T-R-O. And the word for five is cinco spelled C-I-N-C-O. So, for example, we'll be there at four or five. Estaremos allí a las cuatro o cinco. Let's jump right into some practice with these numbers, and we'll throw in examples of some of our other numbers as well. She needs two weapons for this.
Necesitaba dos armas para esto. Necesitaba dos armas para esto. They need three or four things for the party. Necesitan tres o cuatro cosas para la fiesta. Necesitan tres o cuatro cosas para la fiesta. I have five goods. Tengo cinco bienes. Tengo cinco bienes. I'm going to the party with four or five friends. Voy a la fiesta con cuatro o cinco amigos. Voy a la fiesta con cuatro o cinco amigos. Our next number is seis for six. This is spelled S-E-I-S. So, you've probably been working on not bending your vowels in Spanish. For example, the word estés is pronounced estés, not estéis. But this new word for six does have a bend in it because of the E and I together. Seis. For example, there were only six people at the party. Solo había seis personas en la fiesta. And then the word for seven is siete, spelled S-I-E-T-E. For example, don't leave before seven in the evening. No te vayas antes de las siete de la noche. Let's practice this. Once again, we're going to scramble the numbers a bit. He lives with six people and three dogs. Vive con seis personas y tres perros. Vive con seis personas y tres perros. I'm looking at seven numbers. Miro siete números. Miro siete números. You had five and I had six, so I had more. Tú tenías cinco y yo tenía seis, así que yo tenía más. Tú tenías cinco y yo tenía seis, así que yo tenía más. If we leave at four in the afternoon, we'll be there at seven in the evening. Si nos vamos a las cuatro de la tarde, estaremos ahí a las siete de la noche. Si nos vamos a las cuatro de la tarde, estaremos ahí a las siete de la noche. We've generally found that numbers can be pretty frustrating for learners, particularly when it comes to comprehension. So let's spend a few minutes doing a comprehension quiz. We're going to present some sentences in Spanish first, and you should try quickly to identify what is being said and predict the English before you hear it. Solo tengo uno. Solo tengo uno. I only have one. Tres hombres y cuatro mujeres estaban en ese lugar. Tres hombres y cuatro mujeres estaban en ese lugar. Three men and four women were in that place. Necesitas siete de esos para hacerlo para cuatro personas. Necesitas siete de esos para hacerlo para cuatro personas.
You need seven of those to make it for four people. Debíamos estar ahí a las siete, no a las cinco. Debíamos estar ahí a las siete, no a las cinco. We should have been here at seven, not at five. Cinco de nuestros amigos tienen seis perros. Cinco de nuestros amigos tienen seis perros. Five of our friends have six dogs. Vivimos en dos lugares diferentes. Estoy en el número seis. Vivimos en dos lugares diferentes. Estoy en el número seis. We live in two different places. I'm at number six. All right, before we go on to the final quiz, let's learn just one more idiom. To say, it's all the same to me, we already know, me da lo mismo. Literally, it gives me the same. But a synonym is, me da igual. In fact, in general, lo mismo and igual are interchangeable in many situations. Here's an example. You can do anything. It's all the same to me. Puedes hacer cualquier cosa. Me da igual. Now, this leads to an issue. How do you know whether to translate this as me da lo mismo or me da igual? In real life, it doesn't matter. So, in our quizzing, Either answer is correct. Me da lo mismo, me da igual. But for today's quiz, we're going to stick with me da igual to make sure to get some good practice with it. Let's go ahead and get some practice with all our new numbers and idioms using today's final quiz. You can have seven. It's all the same to me. I have four. Puedes tener siete. Me da igual. Yo tengo cuatro. Puedes tener siete. Me da igual. Yo tengo cuatro. I don't care. They can do it by themselves. Me da igual. Pueden hacerlo por sí mismos. Me da igual. Pueden hacerlo por sí mismos. She looks at the bed where she used to live before. Mira la cama donde vivía antes. Mira la cama donde vivía antes. He needed to look at the place where you live. Él necesitaba mirar el lugar donde vives. Él necesitaba mirar el lugar donde vives. They are six people, and they don't have problems among themselves. Son seis personas y no tienen problemas entre sí. Son seis personas y no tienen problemas entre sí. It's all the same to me if you look at that place. Me da igual si miras ese lugar. Me da igual si miras ese lugar. She wants me to live with four kids. Quiere que viva con cuatro niños. Quiere que viva con cuatro niños. I don't live with five friends. I live with six.
No vivo con cinco amigos, vivo con seis. No vivo con cinco amigos, vivo con seis. The weather is good, so she doesn't need seven of those. Hace un buen tiempo, así que ella no necesita siete de esos. Hace un buen tiempo, así que ella no necesita siete de esos. Look at me. I want her to live where she wants to live. Mírame. Quiero que ella viva donde quiere vivir. Mírame, quiero que ella viva donde quiere vivir. In any case, he's near the fire because he's sure of himself. De todas formas, está cerca del fuego porque es seguro de sí mismo. De todas formas, está cerca del fuego porque es seguro de sí mismo. I'm living with only four of these things. Estoy viviendo con solo cuatro de estas cosas. Estoy viviendo con solo cuatro de estas cosas. They live in a place where there is coffee at five in the morning. Viven en un lugar donde hay café a las cinco de la mañana. Viven en un lugar donde hay café a las cinco de la mañana. Don't look at him. He isn't sure of himself. No lo mires. No es seguro de sí mismo. No lo mires. No es seguro de sí mismo. They might need seven if they are going to do it by themselves. Pueden necesitar siete si lo van a hacer por sí mismos. Pueden necesitar siete si lo van a hacer por sí mismos. I don't want him to look at my six dogs. No quiero que mire a mis seis perros. No quiero que mire a mis seis perros. We need you to look at five things where we live. Necesitamos que mires cinco cosas donde vivimos. Necesitamos que mires cinco cosas donde vivimos. I need him to be sure of himself. Necesito que sea seguro de sí mismo. Necesito que sea seguro de sí mismo. I hope they look at it. Espero que lo miren. Espero que lo miren. For more practice with all of this, go to lcspodcast.com slash one, two, three. In tomorrow's episode, we'll learn some new nouns, including the words for plan, memory, and word. This show is brought to you by LearnCraftSpanish.com. The Spanish voice in this episode was our coach Michael Agudelo. Our music was performed by the Seattle Marimba Quartet, and I'm Timothy, encouraging you to do the hard work of learning Spanish. Acquiring a second language is one of the most fulfilling things you can do, so start your fluency journey today at lcspodcast.com.